everyone. We have Ali Jacob here, who is uh, known for her cooking tutorials. She'll be cooking two meals for us today. Ali, do you want to introduce what you'll be cooking for us? Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Elite. Um, my recipes are easy and quick and most of all healthy. So today uh, we're going to uh, demonstrate and you can make it with me or any time you uh, wish. We're going to make a crunchy coleslaw, which is a little uh, different spin on a uh, coleslaw that usually is with mayo and different flavors. This one has no mayo. We're using um, olive oil as our oil and um, we are using um, coconut aminos, which is a substitution for um, soy sauce. But um, I like to give options uh, usually on my recipes. So no one can say I can't do that, that dish or that dish because I don't have like one specific ingredient. So if you don't have coconut aminos, which is a similar uh, taste to soy sauce, but if people are trying to uh, steer away from uh, soy products, and there's a lot of people that either uh, for health reasons, want to stay away from soy, and um, that's a great substitution. Um, I use it a lot in my cooking um, with chicken, with in salads, um, anything that you would use soy sauce um, in. So um, we're do um, the crunchy coleslaw. Uh, while the chicken is um, cooking. So I like to put stuff in the oven, worry about that later, put timer and, and work on the fixings. So we're going to do a shake and bake chicken, but it's, uh, of course, a healthier version, cleaner version. Um, I like to take um, like popular dishes and hack them and find a way to make them healthier and cleaner and without using boxed uh, products, powders, um, food colorings, uh, flavoring, and things that are just uh, hiding um, not so healthy ingredients for us. So I believe that taking little steps in the kitchen um, is the best way to kind of like move from a more of a processed uh, prepared food to a home cooked uh, simple food, but um, delicious nonetheless. And we never compromise on taste or presentation. So um, the shake and bake is with basic ingredients we have in the kitchen um, and um, still has that uh, crunchy on the outside, moist on the inside uh, texture. And who doesn't like chicken? I know that in my house, chicken is the the superstar we always resort to chicken um for like midweek uh dinners so um i'm gonna start with making the the breading but we're not using bread crumbs but you could if you want it but if you're trying to clean your diet and try to get away from the uh, white flour substitution. So I'm using um, almond flour, which is available anywhere. Um, sometimes I use almond meal, but um, it wasn't available when I went to buy it. So I'm, I'm using um, almond flour and I'm gonna put, um, uh, Jolly, do they have the recipe available? They will have it after. I'm yes, using, they have um, it. Okay. Uh, okay. And paprika, paprika not just for the taste, but for the flavor and the color. And it's gonna give the chicken beautiful, um, kind of like deep brown red color uh, because no one wants to eat like a, a bland, um, pale uh, chicken. So I'm putting the dried oregano and a good amount of salt. Let me uh, just stop for one second on the salt that I'm using, I always suggest for people who are trying to move to a healthier diet and healthier ingredients at home and healthier pantry um, 
to move to from um, table salt to um, sea salt, which is in its natural state. It hasn't been processed, bleached, or put with any, you know, tempered with any chemicals or processes. The sea salt actually tastes much better than regular salt, sea salt, I mean, table salt. It's better for for us, it has some minerals that we lost um, when we processed the table salt um, that we see in restaurants. So when you cook at home, um, go ahead and try that sea salt and you'll see the difference. It's really, really yummy on eggs and in anything. So use it just like a regular salt, but that should be your go-to salt. So um, I'm putting a good amount, um, two teaspoons, because chicken loves salt. And if you don't salt your chicken uh, well enough, um, it will be bland. So a secret to a yummy chicken is salt. And when you're using sea salt, you shouldn't be worried about um, the health benefits or if it's bad for you. Uh, sea salt is much safer than a table salt. Of course, you need to watch the quantities, but it's not as harmful as um, white table salt. So this is my uh, bread crumb, but they're not bread again. And I actually like it a little bit more red because it's a little bit pale in my case. I'm gonna add a little bit more paprika and go ahead, make it your own. You, if I set one tablespoon of paprika, you can do one and a half tablespoons. If you love paprika so much, you can do two, two full tablespoons. Uh, make it your own. I always encourage people um, to use my recipes as a guideline, but from here you can take it um, as you as you please. So um, for the chicken, uh, for demonstration, I'm going to use chicken with skin. Um, I have no problem using chicken with skin. Um, if the if the chicken is um, organic and quality. I did uh, do um, a pre-cooked um, tray of chicken, of chicken bake, just to demonstrate because we won't have enough time to wait for this chicken to be ready. But I did um, skinless, boneless. Rice. So here I'm showing you real quick, I'm trimming just the big portions of the fat that shows in the thighs. And uh, of course, washing my head and thoroughly after I touch them. And um, moving along to the chicken with the skin. I'm gonna demonstrate how I folded those. And so I, I'm using chicken legs, but it's favorite. I do tap it a little bit with water because I want that the breading to stick to the chicken. And I generously just sprinkle salt on, making sure it goes all over. Um, and um, I'm gonna put two pieces at a time. You can do one piece at a time for demonstration. I'll do one. So I'm just gonna shake and bake, shake. Make sure it's all Cover it nicely. Without the demonstration, this takes really a couple minutes to make. I'm gonna put two pieces. You see that it's super easy, quick, great meal for middle of the week and for picky eaters because there's no sauce. It comes out crispy, just like everybody likes their chicken and moist from the inside. You want to organize the chicken in the pan um, with uh, about half an inch of um, space because um, you will ensure um, more crispy chicken. So I'm just going to arrange that real quick. Make sure your chicken is all covered. And I'm going to demonstrate what I did with the the skin is on the side. Um, I like to work with thighs because they're much, much more moist piece of the chicken. I'm just going to fold it and tuck it like that. 
and put it here, just like that. It's going in the oven um, on 375 uh, because it's with the bone. It's gonna be there for at least 45 minutes to an hour. Um, sometimes I leave it a little bit longer, close to an hour, uh, because we like our chicken um, crispy and um, dark on the outside. So um, I just have, I made before, these are the skinless boneless chicken and it's ready. I just wanted to demonstrate that. And um, you can see how it's like beautiful color and it will be moist from the inside and uh, crispy on the outside. So that would be our main and let's work quickly. I'm gonna clean real quick surface from the chicken. Of course, you have to be careful when you work with chicken in the kitchen um, to prevent any contamination. Um, so um, I started uh, a little bit earlier and I shredded um, cabbage by myself. I like to work with purple cabbage. It has um, a lot of health benefits because of its color. It carries a lot of antioxidants. And the darker the vegetable, the more colorful it is. It has more uh, health benefits. And cabbage on its own is very good for digestion, full of fiber. And of course, it's a vegetable, so it's very healthy. So I'm going to fill up um, a salad bowl. It's an approximation of about five cups of shredded uh, cabbage. I'm just going to demonstrate one um, tiny bit of, uh, I, cut, I cut the cabbage to four and um, I work with the knife. You don't want to make the pieces too, too thin because then it will be minced and mushy. You want to keep the um, about this size so it's still crispy and there is a bite to it but it's not minced um you can buy pre-shredded um I, uh, I like to if you have a trader joe's around you trader joe's has a mix of um dark and light um uh, cabbage already pre-shredded -pre i use that a lot if i'm short on time but honestly the best uh, tasting cabbage is the one you shred on your own. It doesn't have that refrigerator uh, stale flavor. So I'm gonna add to the bowl. The recipe says a third cup of each, but I'm using my hand. And again, make it your own with as much as you want, but that gives it a really nice crunch. So I'm using silver almonds. I use the unsalted because I don't like the salt that I'm packaging. I like to put my own. And um, sunflower seeds for more crunch. So um, that's our crunch. And of course, scallions, we'll chop them real quick. I do use most of the scallions. Uh, if you don't like the white part, of course, leave it out. We're gonna cut that real quick. It has a lot of flavor, uh, but of course you can leave it out or use some um, red onion or just without. The cabbage is really the star of the recipe here. So it's up to you. Uh, but I do love the color that the scallions add and the flavor. It's this uh, Asian food, food combination um, with the dressing that really all comes together in this salad. So now uh, for the dressing, you can put directly the, the ingredients into the salad, but I'm just gonna make it um, on the side. So we have um, coconut aminos and that's instead of soy sauce. 
So coconut aminos will not be as salty as soy sauce. Um, I'm gonna put um, red wine vinegar, sesame oil. Sesame oil, you just need a tiny bit to get the flavor thin. And good amount of olive oil. You can follow the recipe. I'm, I'm making this salad so often that I can't do the recipe anymore, but and it's really up to you how you're gonna make it um, sweeter or saltier. Um, I'm using coconut sugar, which is has a, a low glycemic um, index, more than the white processed um, sugar. And that adds a really nice kick of sweetness to the salad, mix it all well. Again, you can put the dressing right on the salad without shaking, without mixing it on the side. I do like to mix it when I add the sugar, it gives it an opportunity to melt in the, in the jar. And that's it, we're gonna pour it in, pour it on. Um, because I use soy sauce, I'm adding, I use um, soy sauce, which is saltier. So I'm using coconut aminos which is less salty. So you want to compensate for that and put a little bit of salt. And I like to dress it just before serving. This way you have a super crunchy salad. Um, if it sits a few hours with the dressing, but it's really still good uh, the day after. We love it crunchy and we love it the day after, it's still very satisfying. And that by itself can be a nice dinner. I could eat the entire ball. <laughs> so you get a good toss, more than a regular salad because you want everything to be coated. Give it a taste and make sure you like it. I like it as is. Um, if you feel like adding a little bit more oil, so I don't use pepper here, but if you want, you could. So this is ready. And um, of course our chicken that is still in the oven, but um, together we have a perfect dinner. So um, if you are having any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, the one with the skin the one with the skin is going to be a little bit um and fun with it do we have any questions johnny because i can't read <laughs> um actually i have far. a question <laughs> um yeah. you can also make this recipe with uh, boneless chicken correct yeah exactly so he here, um, my demonstration, the one that I made in earlier, is boneless. So you, do you mean chicken breast? Yes. Boneless. Then some breast. people prefer yeah, their chicken it. without any, any bones in it. Yeah, so the, the thighs that I, I showed are skinless and boneless. Um, you know, you can buy them skinless boneless. In, uh, in Israel, they call it pargiot. Um, here, you can buy it. Um, skinless boneless thighs um, and it's a darker meat but you of course you can do it with chicken breasts i find that it's a little bit drier i mean obviously because it's such a lean piece of the chicken right and i do it sometimes with the chicken i do cut if the breast is too big um i like to cut it in half and you know bread each half separately because it's it it, sometimes the chicken it depends on the chicken, but sometimes the breasts are really big. Um, so it's easier to uh, prepare it with um, when you have the breast. But it's right. really a personal preference. You know, some people don't like the dark meat. Some people don't like breast. I find, you know, 
Um, but lately I've been using the uh, skinless bonus thighs, which I think are the most flavorful part of the chicken. And also I believe that the darker meat has more nutrients and it's a little bit more beneficial, but it's really a matter of personal taste. Right. And also, I guess if you have an air fryer, you could stick this into the air fryer as well and get a crispy chicken here. Right. Definitely. I don't, um, I never got into the uh, air fryer. I have this function in my oven, but I never tried it on chicken. I'm sure you can, but you need to read the instructions of how long. I don't know the times on that because I don't use it, use it on a regular basis. Right. I wonder what, you know, how many minutes. It will be quicker for sure. Right. I have a question. Huh? How many servings does this make? So it really depends. Like you saw, um, I did... Um, the recipe says eight to 10 pieces of chicken and the one and a half cup of almond flour um, will last for the 10 pieces. Um, I still have, I did uh, one, two, two, four, six. I did six pieces, it's in oven, but I still have some breading. I'm gonna throw it away. It is a shame, but um, if I had four more pieces, it would be just right. So the recipe that I wrote down is for about 10 pieces. You don't want to keep that because that has some chicken in it and we don't want to use that again. So this is going in the trash can. It's a shame, but uh, you can definitely even 10 or 12 pieces. So as many as you can with the breading that we made, um, or you can use half of the breading uh, and then leave half on the side and use it and freeze if you don't use it on this recipe. So you can really make it your own. You can make it small as five pieces or as 10 pieces, depends on your crowd. And you said the- and for the staff. For so I would, uh, I would, if you make that um, breading and you think you have too much, I would separate it in two and freeze half for next time you want to make shake and bake and, and use just half or if you need more because you have more chicken, so use it. But um, after you has chicken in it and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't use it again. I would just throw it probably. Okay, great. Do we have any other questions? I don't know. I just feel like I don't like. Okay, I think that's it. Elite, this was wonderful. I hope uh, many of us will try this healthy shake and bake. I think everyone uh, loves and misses fried chicken. <laughs> And this is definitely a great healthy recipy. It is, it is, it is uh, everybody's favorite, yeah? Yes, that's for sure. Great, okay, thank you so much, Elite. We will see you next time for our next live recipe. Everyone get ready for the next time and we will speak to you shortly. Thank you, Elite. Thanks, thank you for having me of next course. time. Of course, thank you for coming. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.